done setting up. It's a pretty place. It's a pretty... It's our second stay here. Look, they shoved it in the plastic right there. This kid found a half a fishing pole. Yeah. With a reel. It's really cool. Did they display all the trash that they found? It's amazing. Oh, you're magnifying stuff? No, let's look at this. That's cool. Oh, yeah, look. Fort Bacon deer. That's a deer. Let's look at deer teeth. Let's look deer at teeth. this one. See if he has cavities. <gasps> oh, look at it. That's yucky. This is what yours would look like if we didn't brush your Oh, man. That's pretty gross. Listen. What are we learning about now? Oh, a seashell? It's the outside so of the shell. Yeah, it's so big it's kind of hard to really see. So this is a sand dollar. You know, a sand dollar is actually a living creature. So let's see if we can figure out what those little lines are. You ready? Let's see if they start to kind of make... Where's no, Papa at? <laughs> oh, God. You think your Papa made that loud noise? Probably, yeah, yeah, I wrote that. Alright, so now we're really close to them. What do they kind of look like? A side of a fish. Scales. Scales? Okay, what else is on a side of a fish? They usually move. The side there. Fins. Right here. How do fish breathe? How do fish breathe, Brenna? You don't know. Gills. That's how the organism inside this thing breathes. Like a foot of a bird, but that's actually a hummingbird. Look who we found. He's right there. Did you see this? How yes. Many cavities yes. He's got? Look at all those cavities. You're a little late to the. We done did that already. Let's go over there. here. We already did that. No. Oh, you see how they turned it? Yeah, that's cool. What if it still turns? Let's go try. You know, you break my bed. You can't cry. Why don't we go this way and check this cannon out? Well. That is cool, though. Shoot in any direction. Oh, look at how many they had, too. Yeah, they're all the way Holy around. cow. Where did you see this? Look at, I mean, here's 
all the way around. They had these. Was the mud on the outside of this wall? It says there was. Really? They called it a ditch in the museum. They never said that it had water in it. I imagine this was just the exterior wall, so if it gets hit by can or water or whatever, it doesn't damage. not have these. These are actually original cannons, uh, or original mortars uh, that were here brought in after the war. Uh, the fort itself kept trying to get in touch with the Confederacy, begging them for mortars, saying we're out here, we're kind of defenseless without them. General Burnside came in, he got set up on the back side of the dunes, and you can imagine all these cannons are kind of useless if the enemy is hiding behind sand dunes. These round cannonballs, even though they were, uh, they had exploding ordinances, they would go into the front of the dune, explode, maybe cover everybody with a little bit of sand, and no big deal. Um, as far as this, just a, a basic kind of pop quiz for you. First of all, this is an 1861 Springfield. Why is it called a Springfield rifle? There's made a spring in, in there, but that's not why it's called a Springfield. Made in Springfield. Yes, it was made in Springfield, but with Massachusetts. Somebody said it, yes. And that's important because it, technically would that make this a Confederate rifle or a Yankee rifle? Yankee. It would be a Yankee rifle. But even though you're looking at an antique, believe it or not, this was such an awesome rifle at the time. The Confederates figured that out very quickly and they started capturing these on battlefields, capturing supply shipments, started realizing like, man, let's get as many of these as we can. And it became almost a universal weapon. Both sides were using this during the war. You might be looking at this though and you're thinking like, man, come on, it's an antique. Like how great is it? And that's probably because you're thinking it shoots something like this. That's a round musket ball. It's about the size. This is 58. Much nicer round. It's also extremely soft. It mushrooms out very easily. And when it hits something, it turns into a nice pancake. And whenever that hits, because it's only flying at about 800 feet per second, about the same as a modern pellet gun, it's got a lot of knockdown force. And when it hits an arm bone, that bone just disintegrates in there. It just shatters into a million pieces. There's no way they're going to put a cast on that and get you back on the battlefield. So where are they going to do that arm? They're going to amputate it. What if you get hit in the leg? Same thing. What if you get hit in the chest? Cut it off. Yeah, if you take something up here back in the day, you're not getting away with a whole lot. So I am going to go through the loading procedure right now. There are nine steps to it. Each one does need to be performed precisely. If not, bad things happen to fingers and eyes and other things. So I will mention a trained soldier that had their wits about them, that had their fine motor skills down pat. He wasn't freaking out in the middle of everything. He could do about 20 to 30 seconds per aim shot. You reach into this satchel, first thing, you grab a cartridge. Each one of these cartridges is full of everything you need to fire, top portion being your gunpowder and the bottom portion being that bullet I showed you a moment ago. And because I have three teeth, three teeth were required to enter service at the time, you can bite that open, spit it out, dump all your gunpowder down in the barrel. Next portion, you tear open and reveal your bullet. And just because we found through trial and error that real bullets in the real world tend to ricochet a lot in here and they tend to hit park visitors, they require me to shoot some Charmin toilet paper today. It's nice and soft, just so for liability, everybody sees it. I'm going to pack that down in there in place of my bullet. 
Next up, remove ramrod. But if you can spin it, drop it down, and then with two fingers and two fingers and only, at all times, you pack that down. The reason when you replace the ramrod, you very densely do it with just your pinky. You never want your hand over a live barrel. If you a chance to reach in here, grab a firing cap. I'm going to put it right here, which is a little hollow tube or tunnel. This becomes my hammer. In the moment when I go fully cocked, I'm going to pull the hammer all the way back. That frees up the trigger to squeeze. When I squeeze the trigger, that cap is going to, or the hammer is going to slam down the cap, and out comes the bullet. Really basic stuff. The only problem with that is it's also very dirty. This is old school gunpowder. It's not even smokeless. Clogs up that little tube or tunnel, so you very regularly have misfires where you hear a pop. You don't have the boom. Regulations require you to do this. Hold it out because you might have a slow burn trying to work its way through to the gunpowder. You don't want to be like, man, what is going on here? <laughs> so if you're required to hold it out, then you'll try another cap. If that doesn't work, you pull out your handy dandy all-in-one tool that they have down in here for you. You stick it on there, you try to wiggle that around in there, try to clear out your tube or tunnel, and hopefully you try firing again. If you try firing again and nothing happens, what do you do? Is your day over, you head home, Hopefully that guy next to you, he's already hit the hay, reach down, grab his gun, and get back into it. So, very real deal stuff here, guys. They're ready to fire, a lot of times they return to uh, shoulder arms. What are they going to wait for? Command. Command, yes, command to fire. They like to fire in a volley a lot of times, so unless you were issued your orders to fire at will, you can proceed to... Ready! Hey! Oh, really? Cool. Cool. Yeah. Oh, 20 and 30 yeah. seconds later, hopefully you can do it all over again. That, in a nutshell, is the 1861. Look at all the I very fortunately you. today have Mark. Mark's one of my best reenactors. He comes out quite frequently on weekends. He's also employed at Cherry Point, so you may have seen him around Bay sometimes. So he is going to show you the thrill of the M1. I'd much rather be firing that for you today, mm -hmm. but this is his own personal weapon. So check this out real quick. I'm also a retired Marine. <laughs> Probably been retired, maybe plus some of your age, but retired for almost 19 years. Anyway, so you saw him sit there load that thing one at a time, you know, in one movement at a time, and he loads it up there, and then he took him almost a full minute you know, sitting there to load that thing. You know, a good, good man like that could shoot three times in one minute. But still, all that time he's in there loading all that stuff, That's how many cool. shots did he get? One. As fast as I can, so anybody can see this work, you go that way. But remember, close my ears. M1's great rifle, very accurate. That's all my nice. Okay. Yeah. So if you've never seen one, I, I, I encourage you to go out. This grand here in my hand at 100 yards offhand, 100 yards offhand, I put eight rounds inside that clip right there. That shows you how accurate it is here. And I don't get those like funky uh, laser sights you guys got now. It's all open sights. All right, sir. All right, guys, that was it. Again, I appreciate everything you did for the park today. Uh, I'm going to hang out down here, answer any questions you might have about the the store room. Hard bread, it's hard to. Is No, it's a fort where they defend the country. In history, this room has been used as a commissary of subsistence storeroom. In this room, the supplies of food for the soldiers of the fort's garrison would have been stored. Today, the room has been restored to how it must have appeared in 1863 during occupation by Union forces in the war between the states. The Army's subsistence department purchased subsistence supplies and distributed them to the various field armies and military posts such as Fort Megan. Most of Fort Megan's food supplies were delivered by steamer from New York and Baltimore. Whether in field or in military... Look at that steak. That's not steak, that's salt pork. Oh. That's awful. Salt beef. Salt beef, salt pork. Four of the is eight months old, one for officers and two for a Of these three, this case was used as a kitchen and natural from the time of the completion of the 
The bake oven? Yeah. It's gigantic. I want to look inside there. Yeah, because the terracotta gets hot and stays hot for a long time. Brick property. Set the warships on fire. Put a hot stuff on. 